I knew Adam just like I, we knew Neil. Um, we knew Three Days Grace um, since they were 17 years old. I mean, obviously, Neil, that story of auditioning. But um, from the very beginning, we knew them and played festivals with them. And, uh, you know, Adam was, I suppose, always an acquaintance, like all those guys were. Um, when I moved into up to Toronto, I remember hearing that Adam, it seemed almost like out of the blue had quit three days grace. Um, I remember like with a letter, like they were just given a letter that he was done and it was big news when it happened. Um, and our guitar tech, Alan, that, uh, unfortunately passed away. Um, he had like played some drums with Adam up in Peterborough, like doing side project stuff. And, uh, I think he, he was the one that told me, yeah, Adam's not in the band. He's doing, he's, you know, he's doing some solo stuff and he gave me Adam's number. So originally I just texted him asking if kind of, if he was okay, you know, like, Hey dude, I heard you left bank. Cause you know, from a distance, what I saw was they were at the peak of their success. And all of a sudden Adam, Adam immediately left. So, um, I was just kind of curious if he was all right, you know, there's some buddy. red flags there for sure. That something yeah. might not be right. So, um, he got back to me and, um, I can't remember exactly what was said, but at the same time, whatever was going on, um, in the finger 11 camp with me wasn't the best. So, um, I think we talked about, it. I said, Hey, if you ever, I know you're doing some solo stuff. If you ever need a drummer, man. And he was like, Oh dude, I might take you up on that. And, like the next day he called me and said, I got some solo st shows coming up, you know, would you want to play them with me? So that's how I first started um, getting Adam back into my life and then playing shows. It was just Adam Gontier um, and he was doing some shows around the state. So I, I, the first show I think was in New Mexico. I played, we flew to like Calgary or somewhere with Finger Eleven. I did a show and then that, that night flew to New Mexico to do a show with Adam. So you know, for a while there, I was doing both and it was just a side project or really not even a side project. It was just Adam doing his thing. And I was just drumming with him. But while that was happening, me and him, we were also having to be neighbors. I found out I, I was saying I just moved into the city and we were like, I, I was in Liberty village and he was, we could literally see each other's windows from my living room. I could see his building. And I remember going, Adam, turn your lights on. And he was flicking them. I was like, Oh my God, dude, I see your place from here. So we were just um, started developing a different kind of friendship than we had in the past and hanging out a lot more. And he was, you know, putting a new project together and it, the more time we spent together and the, how things were getting kind of bad with um, my relationship with a couple of guys in, in finger 11, I was just starting to lean towards the idea of maybe doing something more permanently with him. And we started talking about that. Um, so yeah, that was sort of how the, the, the shift began of me getting back in touch with him. You know, that's kind of the story with that. So when I was 17, my parents drove me from Ottawa to Toronto for Canadian Music Week. And I caught Mudvayne at Cool House in Toronto. And out of nowhere, this young trio band opens up. They look like teenagers. And it was three days grace before anyone knew who they were. And wow. I thought they were awesome. And then a few months later, I Hate Everything About You blows up at radio and they're one of the biggest bands uh, in the world. So that's, you know, me discovering wow. the band before everyone discovered Through Mudvayne. Them. That, that, that's a hard band to open for, damn. You know what? You know what's tough is bands like Mudvayne or Tool or whoever, like their, their fan bases are so diehard that mm -hmm. opening bands get booed, like no matter how yeah. good they are. So I remember yep. three days grace being awesome yeah. and they, they were getting booed pretty hard, like not sure. responding, not showing it, just doing their things, like paying their dues. Yeah. Yep. And yeah, that was a tough gig. Just like you mentioned. I bet. Yeah. So, um, I heard that you helped come up with the band name that I mispronounced Estonia, <laughs> Estonia, Estonia. Yeah. Saint Asonia. So, Saint Asonia, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we had already began, or maybe we had finished recording the, the record. Uh, me and Mike and Adam were in Chicago working with Johnny K, who did the last two Finger Eleven records at the same studio, which was just coincidental um, and kind of a, a mind fuck for me. Um, he had done some stained records. So Mike suggested him as a producer. So here I was again back in Chicago with Johnny, but with Mike and Adam. And 
I don't know. I guess it was nearing the end of the record, um, you know, preparing to put it out. We didn't have a name. So the three of us um, started thinking of names and we just threw a bunch of names in the hat. Um, it's fine. Looking back, a funny thing happened was stained, you know, one, one word, then three days, grace, three and finger 11, two, um, each of us picked the opposite. So like, I think Mike picked the name with three words. I picked something with one and, uh, Adam picked something with two, you know, and we were all kind of laughed at it later. Like, did you realize we all did that? But we, we went through a few names. I think at first, um, I mean, at the end of the day, I think Adam was really the, you know, he was going to really choose in the end. Him and Mike, first of all, I'll have to say that um, even though I was there, it was really Mike and Adam that it was kind of their band. I don't know if I knew that in the beginning, exactly the way the way the band started and the way it was sort of sold to me. I thought I was a little more of a key member of the band, but um, essentially I was just a hired guy in the band, which I found out in real time. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it was Mike and Adam that were going to, you know, run the band and make all the decisions. But Adam liked the name Asonia at first. I remember I hated that. Um, there's a song on the record called uh, King Nothing. We were thinking about calling the band King Nothing. Uh, me and Adam both, it's funny. I always wanted to name a band Oliver Twist. When I was a kid, Oliver Twist was like my dream band name. While we were in the studio, um, me and Adam had a lot of these moments um, in our friendship. He says to me, he's like, you know what, dude, I've always uh, dreamt of, you know, creating a band called Oliver Twist. And I was like, are you fucking with me right now? He's like, no, I'm like, dude, I've dreamt of using that. that that's my like band name since I was a little kid, Oliver Twist out of my like, head what yeah we had so many of those moments uh, you know during our our span of you know hanging out playing together um we you know we were like the twins of it was very strange but yeah saint Asonia adam inevitably came up with that name and um yeah it, it was just derived from three of us throwing a bunch of stuff in the hat to be honest, I can't even remember what Saint Asonia is off the top of my head. It is a real saint. I don't remember the backstory on who or what or why, but uh, there is there is a Saint Asonia. So Stain's album "Break the Cycle" was one of the first albums that that meant a lot to me. Like mm -hmm. I, I related to that angst and that anger, and and it, it felt like. Aaron Lewis was speaking to me directly. So that's a big, that's a big album for me. And Stain's one of my all-time favorite bands. At what point did Mike become a part of that? So at first it was is you and Adam jamming yeah. and Mike comes along. How did you guys think of him? And at what point did he become a part of that? I remember uh, Adam saying that Mike had gotten in touch with him um, during us just in the very beginning. Um, I don't remember at what stage, but it was just me playing shows with Adam and he, he did mention, Oh, Mike Mushak from Stain got a hold of me back then. Mike, um, I guess Aaron had st stopped doing the Stain thing to do some country stuff. So Mike was going to make a record with a whole bunch of singers. He was going to get Corey Taylor, um, Ivan from five finger and Adam was on that list of guys. So he was just going to put out a record of songs, each song with a different guy. Um, so him and Adam spoke and, stained were actually he was playing with jason newstead at the time funny enough mike was uh on tour with jason and they were playing in toronto at the molson amphitheater and adam and mike got together to discuss working together and um i know mike had some ideas and i think they just hit it off right away um the idea of writing songs after that i think mike flew down or they, someone they hooked up at someone's house either mike's or adam's and they worked on I think they wrote fairy tale at that time and they just, uh, you know, felt really comfortable writing songs together. And, you know, Adam told me that he's ha had a bunch of songs with Mike. And before I knew it, um, I was heading to Chicago to start working on some songs, but I didn't, I hadn't really heard any of the songs till I got to Chicago and we did pre-production there for, I think a month or something. Then I went home, th all the stuff that, um, not that I wrote that Mike wrote, but we started having some um, ghost drum tracks too. I went home and, you know, learned the songs and then we came back and actually tracked the drums. So it was, uh, 
it was, yeah, him, him and Mike, it was really inevitably Mike reaching out to Adam. And then I was already associated with Adam. So the three of us sort of, you know, came to the studio and started the band. And if we flash forward to what's going on more currently today, um, you recently had the opportunity to fill in on drums for Chris Daughtry, who's one of the biggest, mm. you know, rock dudes on the planet. This guy sold millions of albums. That mm. guy can sing. That that dude yeah. has a set of pipes. Uh, how did that opportunity present itself? And I, I, we started the podcast by me asking, how good does it feel to get out and play again? I guess yeah. to add on to that, now that it's actually Chris Daughtry that you played a couple shows with, how yeah. awesome was that? Uh, you know, Chris is, Chris used to be in a band called absent elements back in the day. And he used to play a bunch of finger 11 songs. So when we were recording the self-titled record in Chicago, um, our a and R guy was working with Chris who at the time, I don't know if he was on American idol or just before or just after, but he, he was just doing his thing. And I think he called, he either came to the, I was actually asking Chris about this the other day. He couldn't remember either. He either came to the studio or, or he called us at the studio just to, you know, let us know he's a big fan. And, and we didn't know who he was. There's this guy with our A&R guy. I think Greg was like, Hey, this guy, Chris wants to talk to Scott or maybe he brought him there and he wanted to meet the band. So that was our first introduction to meeting him. And soon after we were doing festivals that his first song came out and it was a you know huge hit. Um, and we would see him at festivals and sort of just became acquaintances. And we knew that he was a big fan of the band. And um, fast forward a few years ago, Nickelback were here in Detroit. And I went to see them to see Chad and the guys. And uh, Chris was opening for them and sort of reacquainted with him again. And every time I see him, I always say, hey, if you're ever looking for a drummer, you know. So uh, a couple months ago, uh, we were just in touch and he needed someone just to fill in for a couple shows. And, uh, you know, he, he reached out to me and asked if I was available. And it, it was kind of like just going out there with a, with a buddy that, you know, a friend of mine. And uh, so I learned some songs and went and played some shows with him. But, it, you know, it's like we're, we're kind of just buds. And uh, I hadn't met his band. I got to know his band and they're awesome guys. So, um, yeah, so I. I'm actually heading over uh, to Europe with him in a few days to fill in a few more shows. So I, you know, I'm doing the download festival with, with Daughtry and uh, a few other festivals, but um, it is just a fill in gig. I'm not, I'm not the drummer of the band. They do have a drummer. I'm just, uh, he, he's had some other commitments. So I'm, I'm lucky enough to be asked to go play some shows with him. And um, this time around, I'm getting to go overseas to do it. So again, extremely grateful, um, but it's just a fill in gig right now. <laughs> 